Good afternoon, commissioners. So at the May meeting, we talked about um, possible topics for agency request legislation for the 2025 legislative session. Um, at the June meeting, excuse me, in June 3rd, we held a tribal partner as well as a public meeting to hear any thoughts and ideas regarding the ideas that were shared and discussed at the May meeting. Um, a few other ideas were brought from um, the public meeting as well as from tribal partners and some of those ideas included um, funding WSGC to address illegal gambling activities, equalization of gambling tax rates, equity and license fees, and then authorization of online raffles. Um, Staff is still taking into consideration the information that um, was shared at the May meeting. Um, we, staff is presenting to you um, a few ideas, some of which we, even though it's in the memo, some of those we, we are going to uh, try to address by rule. So we think that we can address the credit card or debit cards um, for collecting fees and recouping those, or excuse me, not recouping, but having the payer pay those processing costs. Um, I think with a little bit more research and uh, possibly a feasibility study from OFM, uh, as outlined by OFM, I think we can go ahead and take care of that without legislative action. Um, in terms of the WSGC collecting unpaid license fees, after a license expires, we did a little bit more digging into some data that we could and, um, you know, the pandemic caused a bit of problems in terms of, um, you know, staff availability and really we didn't want to continue to be very heavy handed with um, licensees during the pandemic in terms of payment of fees. And then, of course, we had some staffing challenges too. So we are just getting back up and operating in terms of our restructuring or rebuilding of our business office, as well as rebuilding our regulatory, excuse me, our life, uh, legal unit. And so um, we have now just really started working with licensees to um, monitor and make sure that after the end of the quarter, if they have not paid, that we are proceeding forward with actively either trying to get them on a payment plan, get them to pay, or unfortunately seeking suspension of their license if they fail to pay and they're still licensed. So um, in looking back at the numbers in 22, and I really would like to just kind of set those aside because I think those are still some anomalies with the pandemic and the fact that we didn't have fully functional units to proceed forward with um, with those licensees. But um, in looking at 23, I think we are potentially, if I just kind of take an average of the quarters that um, licensees who didn't submit license fee reports and pay license fees to us, quarterly license fees to us, um, and I just kind of ex extrapolate from um, an average quarter of license fees that they didn't pay and what they should have, I think we're looking at about $20,000. And so, um, and it's really, I think, one, two, I think there's about five or six. So that would be for one year. And really it start. those are coming from the first and second quarter of 23. And we are moving forward now with those um, reinstituting our processes for administrative action and really working with those licensees. So it's something that we can continue to move forward with if you'd like, um, or we can continue to monitor this and see what kind of action we are able to pursue from licensees who, um, with these administrative actions, with the more outreach, et cetera. Um, and staying on top of those people who are not submitting on a timely basis. It's still not going to get us potentially those people who, um, for whatever reason, lapse and, um, but, and then just don't file their quarterly license report or pay their last quarterly license fee. Um, I think for the most part, we probably have some clues about who those potentially may be if they're already and looking back, it's usually those people who have already had one or two lapsed payments, right? Or there are already some other indications. Um, maybe they're already in the process of selling their entity, or they already have some other sort of administrative situation that 
we are in close contact with them on. So, um, so there's that. And then lastly, um, additional exemptions under the Public Records Act, RCW 4256, um, just potential throughout some comments here, but really seeking to exempt proprietary information from licensees, applicants, and those people who are required to submit to us as a regulatory agency to, um, to outline those sorts of records that we would be required to receive and or review and any information coming from those records that we would specifically outline or at least try to describe and more clearly in, a, uh, in the draft legislation, um, but with the intent to, one, protect the public, make sure gambling is legal and honest, two, protect the assets of the licensee, and three, protect the staff of those licensees in terms of, um, you know, the information that is that we are required to receive and review and notate in our reviews as a regulatory agency. So that is, those are some of the, the topics and uh, today really just looking for you to kind of give us guidance as to identify the topics that you would like us to work on. I think we have 62 days before the, everything's due September 13th. So we will need you to vote on the package on September 12th or the morning of the 13th so we can finalize it if there's any changes. So, um, yeah, I think, I mean, it makes sense maybe to continue down the path of trying to evaluate the lapses and payments and stuff, maybe another year before we go to uh, the legislature. Um, and, you know, that'll give us a little more time to really dig in and, and see a, the, the magnitude of, um, the number of folks um, this applies to, as well as the uh, lost revenue, you know, projections uh, down the road. Uh, and then, um, so yeah, so I think if we can continue just utilizing the tools that we have, try to just stay on top of that and, and have a better understanding of that, uh, that area, for me, that's fine. Um, I did have one question about the uh, public records piece. Um, is there a way to, you know, kind of describe what it is that we are seeking an exemption and clarify that, you know, the, the del deliberative process, we're not trying to, you know, eliminate or get a gain an exemption over any part of the deliberative process, but simply, you know, the staff having uh, access to whether it's proprietary or, or however, um, um, to really to be able to protect that, whether it's intellectual property or other, um, that just by virtue of us having it in our hands, then makes it a, a you know uh, discoverable essentially, and, and could um, be requested. So, yeah, I mean, does that? I mean, does it seem like we can thread that needle? We're working on it. Yeah, I think there's other. I was going to say, are there other play? I would assume there's. Uh, Yes. So keep in mind that under the Public Records Act, uh, it's a broad mandate. All right. All any public records, uh, those i.e. used or maintained by an agency are considered public records and therefore there needs to be a exemption that applies to them before the agency is uh, on sort of legally defensible ground in order to deny uh, or otherwise redact or withhold a record. Um, what is being worked on right now is sort of very specific language that makes it clear sort of the specific security and other sort of proprietary concerns of the records. 
Um, and keep in mind too that some of these records may fall into other exemptions, but we're looking for more clarity at this point so that the exemption is not, uh, you're on very legally defensible grounds when it is asserted. So all of these are things that are being kept and taken into account as we're working to draft language. I just wanted to be abundantly clear that we're not trying to provide exemption for anything that is part of our deliberative process, just so. Yes, and uh, public records are obviously something that is very uh, highly prized by the citizens of Washington State. Um, so again, part of this process is to again, narrowly define the records in a way that makes it clear the reasons that the commission would be bringing forth this particular legislation. Um, it, it may still be contested, um, but uh, that, that I think is the part of the draft goal. Yeah, because when we say protect the public by ensuring gambling is legal in us, it's, you know, obviously we have very proprietary information regarding gambling equipment and the securities around those sorts of things. And so, you know, that information in and of itself getting out there, any information we have around protection of assets, as well as protection of the employees or the safeguarding of their staff, really staying within those parameters of the reasons for our requests. Thank you. Any other commissioners have anything, Dr. Griffin? Okay, so at this point, I think we'll just continue to move forward with the Public Records Act exemption. We'll be monitoring and um, and collecting information. Maybe in a future meeting, then budgetarily, maybe we can work it into that in terms of stats in the next year or something like that. Okay, we'll bring step back. Um, we'll report back in August how we're doing and uh, moving forward with this. And then um, action in September if you continue to move forward with it. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Can I add one more on kind of this topic? No. No? <laughs> um, so looking at some of the other topics that the public and or uh, you know, tribal meetings kind of brought up, um, I guess I wanted to um, confirm that um, we still have kind of the same policy as a commission regarding, you know, uh, what, you know, doesn't have to be an expansion of gambling, but if a, uh, if somebody is from the industry trying to like, so I'll, I'll just use authorization of online raffles. Um, I don't anticipate that the gambling commission would ever have uh, or ever come to a uh, position of support for that uh, unless it was, you know, like, well, I'll end it there. Uh, but I believe that we could become neutral on something like this if in fact it provided the agency with the tools um, to you know properly regulate and control um, the activity so uh, i know we've had that some of us that have been around for a few years we've had that conversation before that you know perhaps if a proponent of one of these changes comes to us, we maybe could get to neutral, but it's only if our staff is like, yep, if you do this activity in this this fashion, provide this information, we could um, properly regulate it and then allow the legislature to do their responsibilities of evaluating the policy of whether it would be, whether they wanna change state law policy-wise on those sort of things. So I just want to find out if we have we changed our perspective on that at all as a, as a commission or is are we going to stick with that kind of going forward this next year? Muted. <laughs> Senator, you're muted. 
Uh, the only com com comment I have is there's a state ban on internet gaming. And, uh, you know, if you're looking at some different type of gambling that outside internet, I, I would assume that it, it, you could look at it, but internet gaming is pretty, there's a pretty clear ban on internet gaming in state law. So, and so any effort to move raffles into the internet to sell them encounters that ban. And I just uh, hope that uh, you keep to, that rem we remember that. Okay, <laughs> um, maybe we need. I'm not suggest. You know, it's just the internet gaming situation is pretty clear in the state of Washington. 